Okay, and we are rolling. Welcome back, guys. This is uh, part two of the um, unofficial first episode of the podcast. I am still being joined by this. Where's my hand going? This beautiful man over there, Mr. G. Um, we were talking about, yeah, we were talking about Machine Head. And Ooh. the track that I remember hearing was Locust, which came out fucking 10 years ago, apparently, on Roadrunner Records. But I'm thinking... Ago Locust was? Say again? That, I didn't know that's how long ago Locust was. Really. Well, that, well, that's when it was released on Roadrunner Records on their um, on their YouTube channel, which I don't even know if it... Are Roadrunner Records even still a thing? I don't even know. To say, I think they're still with them to this day, but... Yeah, I'm actually gonna listen with nuclear blast. Nuclear bat, nuclear bat. They they post some absolutely mad shit. Aye. Uh, on a I just want to actually see. Roadrunner, right? When was the last time they uploaded something? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They've still been doing stuff, but not like. Oh no, no, God no! They've not released stuff for freaking <laughs> ages. That's mad. Because right, that was like the kind of label to be on, wasn't it? It was for a while, yeah. yeah. Nuclear Blast has taken that over, and then... Well, as of recently, man, Unique Leader Records. Dude, I was going to say that. Unique Leader, oh, yeah. they're, they're dropping some fucking bombs. But they, but you know, oh. like, but, but Century Media, they've got, they've got yeah, Lorna Shore. And they just, they just put on Signs of the Swarm. They just joined Century Media. Oh, did they really? Oh, oh, yeah, right enough. The new, their their latest track, which I haven't actually heard. Would you believe it? I'm saving it for a reaction video because that's all I do. Nice, nice, nice. And thing me, distant, distant on Century Media. Whoa, Century Media. Yeah, okay. It seems like they're picking up a few people just now, man. Fucking hell! Jesus, there's going to be no one left for Unique Leader Records at all. Holy shit! Fucking hell! <laughs> That is cool, man. But yeah. even, like, I, well, for me as well, it's random having, like, um, say, like, a band like Bleak from Within from Scotland and remembering when they were just, before they even had an EP, when they're just playing gigs and stuff, and then the first EP came out and different things like that and seeing them rise to where they are now. Yeah. Signed to Nuclear Blast. And I'm just like, ah, that's cool as fuck. Just showing you that, you know what I mean? Local lads at it can get that far, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, oh, obviously, yeah. the time and effort and stuff put involved and dedication is sure because there's plenty of good bands out of Scotland and Glasgow that have just not made it and dropped off the wayside. But they fucking just obviously the new stuff's like kind of the more metalcore kind of thing, but for what it is, it's like at the top of its fucking game, you know what I mean, with well, their old. The way they are sprinkled on top of it. Well, I mean, I've never been in a band or never tried to tour or do any of that type of shit. But I imagine that, um, I imagine it must just be a lot of luck involved with actually making it because you've got to think about like people's jobs, their schedules, aye, aye, like all aye. that type of stuff. Like, I imagine it must be aye. like, yeah, taking in everyone's fucking characters. Uh huh. Maybe everyone is in that. As well, which is like, yeah, it sounds the way we are just now, the way shit is, we're headed straight off. Well, I, I, I can't remember who it was, but it was an, an interview I read in Kerrang! magazine. I think it was Kerrang! It doesn't really matter, but it was ages ago, and a guy said, you know, a marriage is really difficult, but being in a band with five people, like, and you're all artists... And you are maybe like a drink and a smoke, like that's that sounds fucking difficult. Especially if you're like, I mean, like, like, like case in point, like, uh, like Volvidinia, their their tour, their tour schedule was pretty fucking crazy. Like, because I looked at where they played before and then where they played after, and it's like it, like, holy shit, they better be, they better be tight, otherwise, yeah, 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 yeah. I can like some not even getting a break. After like twelve days, two weeks straight every night of shows, man. And the shit thing about not being able to actually see places when we I mean, when they're literally here for one night, gone. 
you get to like spend like an afternoon during the day, maybe walking around somewhere. I'm just like you're just on a bus constant with yep. folk. Yep. I mean, if it ever did get to that stage, just I mean, I already know what to expect to a degree, and yep. there is fucking six of us. <laughs> but that's the thing with in terms of input and the whole I'm a fucking artist kind of shit. There's none of that. It's all really kind of chill. Come down to like Tony writing stuff. I'll go with Tony, write some stuff, do the drums, do whatever we can do, get it to a point where we put it in the chat, give it to Dan, he'll do vocals, he'll get some lyrics on the go, and then we'll start to jam out. I mean, it's simple. There's not been any of like, oh, this is my riff, let me use this riff, this is my idea, let me use this idea, or oh, or if something, everyone's be like, no, maybe not into that, or some of this stuff's changed, or stuff just it's naturally just gotten better. Even when I still have, like, the first, first, um, like, WhatsApp audios, when Tony was putting stuff into the chat. Right, right. Songs, and then I look back even to my drums, and the bits I've added on top of it, and bits I've changed, and it's just became, it became that bit better. Okay, and the way they got to a point where it's just like cool that's the way they are and then we'd have the songs and jam them out and shit and yeah and oh. now I've kind of got a rough idea of what I'm playing <laughs> even though it kind of yeah. changes up from show to show but fuck it is what it is yeah that, that's actually a nice segue on uh, another topic I wanted to raise explain to me the origins of the head of the traitor like who started the band were you guys friends in high school or like how did you meet like what's the what's the origin story it was just like as well I knew Tony I'd met him and Craig from previously back like whatever between like 2006 mm-hmm. to 2000 nine in the kind of wee gig scene they played in a band from Shadow Shall Remain mm-hmm. and Craig was vocals and Tony Tony was drums because there's a picture of Tony playing my old kit in the cat house oh right Tony's okay behind, Tony's behind my drum kit fucking playing it with my two bass drums and all that shit like a big setup. Um, so I always kind of knew him and then when my old job finished and I came back and wanted to kind of play music again, I got in contact with one of my old guitarists in like two previous bands back, really like a band I was in when I was 16. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got in contact with one of them just for jamming. I just wanted to hit drums again mm-hmm. and went with him for the jam. And he was more kind of involved with the internet and shit like that. I didn't have anything. So he was on some forum looking for other guitarists mm-hmm. then he's all found a guitarist to come to a practice with us and then we went to practice the next thing you know what I mean Tony turns up and I'm like oh what I, like, I know you I know you and then we still have been sitting talking to each other and that and then we got a singer involved for a little while and that didn't really fit so there's only a couple of jam sessions that were literally just kind of making noises. Nothing was really happening. Okay. Me and Tony, me and Tony were really just playing through Kill Switch and Gage's first album. <laughs> nice. I like it. Just to, just to warm up and to play stuff. So we're just playing the, the first album of Kill Switch. Um, and just mocking about. You know what I mean? Different things like that. And then the other guitarist, um, he... Um, had other stuff and uh, couldn't really jam that often and stuff so it was just me, Tony and this uh, vocalist and then that wasn't really kind of fitting we didn't jam for a wee while there was nothing kind of happening for ages we weren't doing anything with that vocalist and then I said to Tony he said to me like let's have a wee jam for me and him and then me and him went for a practice and we just can't remember what kind of stuff we were playing Definitely wasn't like, any kind of deathcore stuff. That's the weird thing about it. I mean, it wasn't anything like we were writing. We were just kind of mucking about playing stuff. Right. Had some ideas. Bang about. I never really done like blast beats or anything this heavy. I'd done little bits before, but not like for full sections and shit. Mm-hmm. And, 
and then yeah, and then me and Tony just like so you want to try and get some other people involved in this, and we'll actually try and make it into a band. Well, yeah, and then he's like, I'll get my uh, brother and Craig because we, we we had a clear idea to be like what it is, like mm-hmm. symphonic and black and death core. So we like because Tony had that shit lying around. So like, we'll get Craig on the fucking keyboards and all that different things, and then hopefully he'll maybe do some vocals at some point, because that's what he used to do. You know what I mean? But he came in and it took a, a while before he started screaming on the mic, because he hadn't done it in years. So he was just doing his thing. And then um, Tony's like, I know another guitarist I used to play with, Richie. And then Tony got Richie involved. And then Tony was on some forums, and... It was something that Darren had put on like a year, like a year ago, or something mm-hmm. at least. It's like rolled to the post, and then Tony replied to it, and Darren's like, "All right, cool." <laughs> and he's like, "Aye." And then Dan came along to practice. I think did we already have David by that point? I'm not sure if Darren was the last one or not. And then there was, there was either, um, David as well. We found him as well on some kind of forum thing as well. Forums, right. Yeah. Right, Tony did, and then that's it. Next thing, that's everyone. <laughs> right, where, where, um, what about the name, the head of the traitor? Where did that come from? Yeah, well, it was kind of born out of spite, it will be because previous band I'd played in, um, well, I believe they had a, uh, they, they, they started a band called head in the traitor I right. believe um, and it seemed like it was like a dig at me in some kind of ways right could have oh, been right. Fairly, could, it, could have not been but whatever I was just like cool because I didn't have social media at the time either and there was some kind of shit went on with them so I was like whatever and the missus told me I've seen it and different things like that and I was like okay they started a wee band or something this is where I wasn't playing music at all Okay. Then I didn't know if they were still on to but see how like there's that also that platform that's kind of like Slam called Behind the Trailer. Yeah. I first had thought I just clicked into that. I didn't know what it was. I clicked on the first video, and I was like, "This isn't them." I was like, "I don't understand what this is," and I was like, "Man, maybe they're on here somewhere." And I think at first I thought, "Oh fuck, there, there was like something they weren't." Like, right. I, I, like it wasn't actually them, it was just some other band that was put onto that behind the traitor fucking platform. And then I was like, actually, no, they're not really in a band, they've not really done stuff. There's only fucking two of them. Right. And then I was just like, <clears throat> we were, uh, then it came to the point where we were trying to figure out names and what to do. Mm-hmm. And then it was, Mrs. was just like, what about the head of the traitor? And I was like, I can, I can see that and then I just put it into the chat and everyone's like yeah cool love it that'll do and I was like yeah actually yeah that will fucking do I yeah like, that'll be fine and no, then I was I... at Bond then eventually having a wee doodle with me and the missus together and came up with a logo and then that got refined by someone so then we got the logo which has got like the T-H-O-T-T in the logo um, yeah, I was just like, yeah, I always wanted a fucking emblem as well to go along with shit, like back in the day with Slipknot S and yeah. Soulfly sign, the two Fear Factory Fs, and all that kind of shit. Now that's cool as fuck. And I, 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 I knew you were, I knew you were going to mention Beheading the Traitor. Um, cause there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of outtakes, which I, I need to actually start recording some of my outtakes for reaction videos, but was about when I was doing my reaction video to the beginning, I went and boom, we are live, blah, 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 blah. And today we're going to be, uh, we're going to be checking out Beheading the Traitor. And I'm like, fuck, fuck's sake, that's <laughs> not who we're, fu-. I'm like, for fuck's sake, cancel. Dude, I'm no joking, like five times in a row, I had to go, I had to actually I'd go for it. i at the end of the videos, that would be brilliant. Dude, man. I know, <laughs> and I know. I need to. I need. I need to put that on Patreon or some shit like mm-hmm. that. But I had to actually go for a walk. Legitimately, I went. Nah, fuck this. I'm. I'm out of here. This is seriously. Like, see, on the third time, I was like beheading the trait for. 
fucking just went punching myself on the dick. I was so fucking angry. Um, um, you've. I might just be making this up, but. Um, yeah, you've worked abroad, haven't you? Like, or were you like born abroad, or did you grow up like in the Middle East or something? Oh, I both. I, I was uh, born in Dubai and lived there for 10 years and then came home and then worked in Kuwait for two years and Saudi for like fucking seven, nearly eight. I, I, so I, 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 the one I, I, it was like half and a half my life spent between both. I would love to hear a little... How, how did... How did you end up being born in Dubai? Because uh, you don't, you don't, you, you don't look like you're from, you're from Dubai. No, but I do think a good fucking tan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> used, to, used to be used to be heavy fucking brown. Um, uh, it was basically because my both my family side, my papa, like my mum's dad, went to lay the roads over there when it was just fucking desert. Oh and we wow! Play the, first, the first roads and shit, tarmac and that, and make it into we city. And then my dad's dad was in the same kind of like line of work, mm-hmm. and he was as well. And then I think my mum, right, mum, yeah, then she went to work over there. My dad was working over there. Then that was it. They met each other. Then they lived over there anyway. You know what I mean? Wow! And that was me born. Fucking hell. What was it like what what was it like growing up in Dubai? Yeah. Obviously at the time in that it's normal, but it's just like a wee plastic bubble, wee plastic wonderland. Right. Especially what it is now, what people relate it as. It's always been like that, but it just wasn't well known. Or fucking accessed. It's always been fancy and different. Right. Yeah, it's normal. And I'm fine with the heat. Like, I'm shit with a cold. I can take heat all day. Dude, I'd melt. I, I, I would melt like a fucking candle if I went to Dubai. I'm not joking. I would. Uh, yeah, really I would. Bonk. Really yeah. bonkers. Yeah, I mean, that. Yeah, uh, sorry, go on. No, like, it's just like heavy multicultural, isn't it? You know what I mean? You grew up with fucking people from all kinds of countries around you. Right. And it's not like having that whole Scottish roots and Scottish like the culture thing. You don't, you know I mean, you don't really care about that until you move home and like little bits and that you see because every summertime come home because it's too fucking warm. So you got to leave the country and just come home. Right. right? Well, wow, that's that's that 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 is pretty bonkers, man. Yeah, that's that's pretty mad. And what was it? So, what what was it like coming from Dubai? Over a uh, over a uh, not so sunny Scotland. That must have been a that must have been shit. Shock. Yeah, yeah, that was total culture shock. Especially because when I came back, I moved to a small village, moved to some wee shitty fucking school, and I sounded heavy English. So Stuart Evans like, why do you sound English? <laughs> why this? Why that? And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on here, man? And like the same age groups. Like, in terms of, like, protection-wise, and, like, what would that have been? Primary 5? Mm-hmm. However old you are on Primary 5, like, the equivalent in Dubai would be, like, still playing in a sandpit, still playing with toys, still being a little kid during lunch breaks and stuff like that, conversations. Right. Coming over here, and there's, like, kids smoking. Talking about blowjobs, right. talking about fucking all kinds of just mad shit. <laughs> and it's just like, what the fuck, man? And then, you know what I mean? People smoking hash and that in primary six and primary seven. I'm just like, this is fucking, this is insane. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that sounds, that sounds pretty bad. And a total, a total different part of life because there was no like, oh, council state posh bit different things in Dubai and that like it's all nice and then you've got like the workers or the slaves and shit you know what I mean it's like two different sides to society but it wasn't just like yeah it was very much different 
to coming back here being like, what the fuck? And then actually getting to learn about everything. By the time I got to like first year, when I met a friend, who was like, that's a junkie, that's an alky, that's this, this is how that works, this is how this works, <laughs> don't take any shit from anyone, blah, 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 all that kind of shit. It was just like, oh, I get you now. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah. I never, yeah, I never really, never really thought it about that way. Never, never. Th- <clears throat> excuse me. Never thought about it that way because I've like, because I've, I've lived in Scotland my whole life, and like all the kind of like absolutely mental stuff that happens, especially in Scottish primary schools and high schools, I just kind of take for granted. I'm like, eh, you know, we're not America. There isn't people running in with grenade launchers or anything, you know, but. <laughs> Now that I actually look at it, you know, because the son that my the 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 high school that my son goes to is like it's reasonably good, but yeah. like some of the shit, it's like you know it's in the Scottish borders. It's not like in the middle of fucking Nidri in Edinburgh or some shit, but it's still like there's still fairly mad shit kicking off on like a weekly basis. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. well that's what I mean. Like in, in Dubai now, you wouldn't see like well, I didn't get to go to like the high schools and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. as far as primary schools concerned, there's very much and even life in general. You live in fucking compounds, you know what I mean? With walls around them and shit, little security guard gates, little fucking, like, yeah, there's no, you don't really see, like, people swearing, you don't see people drunk out in the streets, you don't see people using drugs, you don't have any of that kind of shit. It's a really little plastic sheltered life. Yeah, you know what I mean, and then you and know. then and then you come to Scotland, and there's just uh there's a junkie taking a shit right in the street. Yeah, there's just mad shit going. On. Like, why the fuck are they like that? Why the fuck this? What the fuck that? And people just genuinely being angry and assholes. Yeah, you know I mean, you wouldn't over there. Over there, it's like you know I mean, hand on foot shit. You won't yeah. go and get bad service anywhere. You know what I mean? That's like the same way as now. It's just a mad fucking wee plastic wonderland, man. I wouldn't go back. It's not my cup of tea. I was last there. Fuck, was it? 2017 or some shit? All right, okay. What is it about... <laughs> why, why, why isn't it your cup of tea? Like, what is it that you don't dig about it? No, it's a bit too safe. Like, in terms of like, other countries and that, like Saudi and different things, it's not really got like an edge to it. Oh, right, you know okay. I mean? but it's like very much... There's no history. It's not really much stuff going on really that I don't really know about I know your history <laughs> you found oil you built shit happy days right yeah that's about <laughs> yeah um, yeah not much history going on yeah that makes, yeah, that makes sense um, obviously there's old towns and different shit but I was like nah Dubai you need to watch what you're doing for sure but in Saudi it's a little bit lawlessness about it which I like you know what I mean Dubai is very much need to watch what you're doing some places it's just no, it's just not my cup of tea. Mate. It's plastic. A little bit too plastic. Just, like, you, 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 nowadays you see like, people like going there like and stuff like so like, well to do posh people and footballers and all the fucking rest of it. You know what I mean, when I was younger, people would be like, "Where's Dubai? Do you speak Dubaiish? Like, what is Dubai land and all that kind of shit?" Abu Dhabi didn't exist. Just desert. Just a road with a fucking truck stop on it, and now it's a big fucking booming metropolis city that's fucking incredible really when you think about it this was all desert when I left all of it all desert and then when I came back after that gap coming out of the airport and shit and saying to the taxi driver like fuck is that building is that that and being like whoa what the fuck man that felt like Jetsons kind of shit I mean like step into the future when you imagine the future to be (laughs) so over there you got the the fucking metro you got this you got that everything's fucking hand on foot service yeah like Bonkers, absolutely bonkers, and you can live that lifestyle of this this fancy fuckery, man. Really, that's, that's what you're into. That's fucking, that's fucking mental. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, but I mean that that part of the world, like some of the, like they they've literally just found liquid gold, like mm. under under the ground, and that's why they can kind of just build these ridiculous metropolises in such like a short space of time. Have you seen what they're building in Saudi, that Neom City? Or the wall? You know, uh, it, it's funny you should say that. Emma uh, showed me that the other day. I was looking at that thinking, that can't be real. 
There's no fucking way that's actually a real thing. And I'm like, oh shit, that's actually real. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what it's like over there. Like, in terms of, like, always been, you think of someone, you have an idea, and you're like, oh, that's just fake. That's not real. Because I was there when that seven star hotel that's got the helicopter pad on the roof, it's got like a mad arch to it and shit in Dubai. It was like the first seven star hotel in the world. I went to go see the old hotel get demolished. Mm-hmm. That was like a day. That was like a day out for people. I mean, there wasn't that much going on back then. A day out, everyone went just to go see the hotel get fucking demolished. And then, <laughs> obviously, you got to see, like being in Dubai, you'd see about the place on mm-hmm. billboards and stuff, the designs, the ideas of what it's going to be, like underwater fucking restaurant, surrounded by fish, mm-hmm. all this sort of shit. It's just like bollocks. Like fuck off. I was going to be water slides going here and in and out of the hotel and blah 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 and all that kind of shit. You know what I mean? You're like, no, nonsense. And then they build it and you're like, fuck. That Atlantis hotel, you know what I mean? Yeah, like you fucking. You just slap pish. Like, you know I mean, you'd see the sketches and different things. You'd be like, bollocks, man. You're not no, doing no that. Way. You're gonna There's a... no way you're gonna, they're doing you're gonna, that. You're going to shoot sand onto the sea and rise it up and then build stuff in Tapio. Like, fucking shut up. But then, next thing, all right, cool. Obviously, there's been issues and that with it, but still, it's done. They just went it's out and they just went out and fucking did it. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just like mind boggling. Oh, fuck, man. Fucking yeah. weird. Yeah, and, it, and I'm just like humbled by that aspect of things. Like all oh, that shit doesn't impress me. I don't aspire to all that shit. Like and even seeing like Lamborghinis, Ferraris, all this kind of crazy shit. I wouldn't even look twice at one. When I see it, I'm so desensitized to all that shit. Right. I right. won't get out my camera or my phone and take a picture because I've fucking seen a million. And even over, especially in Kuwait, because it's such a small country, like, it was insane. You should look into their laws and what their benefits are. It's insane, mate. I could talk about that in itself for fucking ages. But over there, um, yeah, it, You'll sit, a set, you'll sit at a set of traffic lights and it's just Lamborghini, Ferrari, fucking McLaren, fucking Aston, Bentley, Bugatti, right. Nissan GTA. And they're all customised, custom wrap, fucking gold paint, fucking custom black, fucking decals on it, fucking neon green rims. Like They get them and then they fucking make them even more extravagant. Yeah, yeah, an already <laughs> and already quite extravagant car. Yeah. And, anyway, and it's such a small country. Like, it wouldn't even take a couple hours to travel the full length of the fucking thing. It's so small. Um, you see you see the same cars every day. Is, I mean? Kuwait, is Kuwait really that small? Mm-hmm. Shit. You can it's literally like, just... It's, like, it's like just like desert, and then along the coast of desert, and a few little villages and fucking Bedouin shit, and then a little kind of city, and then industry, refineries and all that shit. Mm-hmm. Then like a kind of, and then it's got like a little kind of actual city. That's it. Well, nothing to it. Man. That's fucking. That's fucking mad. Yeah, when Emma showed me that, um, when Emma showed me that, and then she started like when like the the big voiceover started going into all the details about what they're gonna do in that big fucking wall city thing or whatever the hell you want to call it. That was blowing. I was just blown away. I was like, what? But then the thing that I want to see is, like, show me the basement where all the workers and all the fucking slaves are fucking living. You know what I mean? All the fucking staff and all the upkeep. And I was like, that's going to be, like, fucking dripping water and fucking steam pissing out of fucking pipes and shit like that. (laughs) Well, it's fucking drones and shit flying about delivering you a fucking slice of pizza because you've clicked your finger or you've shouted fucking Alexa into the sky. And someone's brought you a slice of pizza. Yeah, I, yeah, I think there's, I think there's truth to what you're saying there, man. <laughs> All right, the folk are into that shit. They love it. Like over there, they're really tech savvy, man. Mm-hmm. Everyone's latest phones, latest shit. They know how to work it. They know the phone inside out. You know what I mean? Like buy a phone, cool. Let me install WhatsApp. I've got YouTube, I'm fucking good to go. Like, but they know how to work. Everything they're on, everything is very techy. This piece of shit... F- this, piece of what you got? this piece of shit phone, it's like an iPhone, it's an iPhone 5S or some 6S or some bullshit. Nice. 
and it's so crap that for some reason the TikTok app takes up like a shit ton of my space. I don't know why I'm actually just thinking deleting TikTok. So there's sometimes when I'll be filming a fucking shout out video and I'll just be getting to the, so go do that YouTube shit, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And it'll just be ran out of space. And I need to go back in and delete a bunch of fucking photos. And then it's, yeah, no, honestly, it's, it, I I've, hate I've not got much on my phone. You've what, sorry? I've not got much on my phone in terms of apps. I need TikTok. And, well, I don't need it, but TikTok and Instagram are kind of kind of useful for my... Um, 100%. For my, for, my, for, my, for, my, for my line of work. Um... I think I know the answer to this, but do you uh, do you game? You're a gamer, or were you? Yeah, well, I used to game when I was younger, like PC and different shit like that. And then obviously Sega's and Nintendo, PlayStation. But then, say between like, well, yeah, I always did kind of game to be honest, but not as much in my teenage years and that at all. It was only when I got together with the misses and kind of chilled out and stuff. And was staying in, in the house more. I got back into gaming and then online gaming. Well, I mean, we you, back you, the actions of people live, you like shooting them in the face. You and me, um, you and me attempted to play Apex Legends one time. And yeah. you were, you were all being this big humble motherfucker. You were like, ah, I, I play a bit, man. I play a bit. You're like, you know, yeah, yeah. And you come on, and your name's got a big golden fucking thing around it, and oh, you've got the no. fireworks coming off and shit. And I was like, "Look at this humble motherfucker! This guy's not like you. You were putting it off like some kind of scrub." And I was like, "All right, okay, I'm minus, no, I'm level I'm minus five or some you know, shit." I think you came on like level three, and yeah. I'm level five hundred. And I was like, five hundred, and I, I died immediately, and you just fucking went through a ramble. Uh. Yeah, we do get sweaty on, on Apex and first person shooters. Yeah. But even all that stuff comes down to obviously hand eye coordination. Yeah. Same with drums. You know what I mean? So and when I used to play golf and different things, like I've always been good with hand eye coordination. Oh shit, you're a golfer. Uh I used to be. I still play. Used to be. Well, I- I was growing up in Dubai and all that kind of shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was Part just the- that literally just popped into my head. Now I went to a driving range one time and I was so embarrassed by how terrible I was at it, I just never went again. And that was the only experience I've had with with golf. I tried for a very, very long time to hit the ball and then I hit it about, I don't know, ten feet and I was like, mm, this isn't for me. Yeah, it wasn't this is- for me. I stopped I stopped playing like for teenager and shit. Same with rugby, and I used to play rugby, like rugby and golf. I was just like, no. Play music, play drums, BMX, and going out and getting wrecked, and that. Yeah, going out and getting wrecked. Yeah. yeah. What were so what 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 games did you what games did you did you come up like playing like, like yeah. you know Sega and all that type of shit? But like what like what what were some of your favorites? Old school ones is Command and Conquer. Oh, dude. To the, to the Fucking right, man. Command and Conquer. Oh, my God. Little mini base building shit like that and StarCraft and any of that kind of shit in that area. Either. There was a game called KKND. I like that as well. Crush, Kill and Destroy. It was basically just like the same as Command and Conquer, but you're building like big crabs with missile launchers on them and shit. <laughs> Mutants and that. Was, KKND. Uh, all that kind of shit. All right, Crush, Kill and Destroy. And as well... Going back and even you should do the same, mate. Go back and listen to Command and Conquer '95 soundtrack. The amount of kind of rock and metal influences yeah. in that. Sound, when I go back and listen to it, I'm just like, oh fuck yeah, man! Yeah. And Warcraft, original Warcraft, not the RPG shit. Yeah, like the Warcraft one and two. Like listen to the soundtrack of Warcraft two. It might as well be like David Vogel. I was listening to that the other day as well. It was off your hum, 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 and just like, it's amazing. That's <laughs> so cool. I could like, take stuff out of Warcraft 2 and put fucking blast beats over it all day. A, oh, mate, that's an idea. That's an yeah, idea. You, 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 had, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Um, 
No, it, it actually, I've got a very, very, um, a very strong memory of really, really liking the soundtrack from um, Command and Conquer. I played Command and Conquer on the Sega Saturn. Like that was I'll like, that as well. yeah, it was on for that as well. Yeah, well, it was a good series. Yeah, like Command and Conquer, then Red Alert, and then yeah, you know I mean, it went on for years. Tiberium Sun, I think, was uh, yeah. I think was the yeah. one after that. Yeah, fucking, yeah. Fucking, fucking love it, man. When you say, did, did you ever get into StarCraft Two? Yeah, yeah. StarCraft One and Two. Played both of them, but yeah, I used to. Uh, my my dad is absolutely obsessed with StarCraft Two, like mm-hmm. totally obsessed with it. He got me in it. It's a bit. It's fucking brilliant. It is. It is good. Um, I mean. I, I usually tried to climb the ladder and like play against actual people, and that's that's a that's a oh, pretty. I was about to say that to you, man. I tried that once, like re- like realizing, oh, you can play online multiplayer and that. And the next thing, some fucking someone's killed you with a bunch of fucking squiggly lines and shit for the name from the far east, and it's just like, ah, okay then. I was like, I'm not playing this online. That was a fucking joke. Like I believe even the little robots that you used to go and mine stuff. Like they send that straight away over the, towards you, so they see where they see where you are. And yep. then before you know, there's just people attacking you before you've even built anything. It's like, what the fuck is this? How do, how can you click quicker than I can? Yeah, I it's it. no, nah, it's it, it's 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 ridiculous. I, I I don't play too much. I don't play. I don't play any StarCraft two these days at all. Um, oh, but I, I do. I I do watch like the World Championships and stuff like that, and like the the APM <laughs> actions per minute. It's like it's over. It's like over three hundred standard. They're oh, lit- man, sorry, bonkers, man. I'm un- fucking right. believable. It's ridiculous. They're like, they're like they're omnipresent. They're at like multiple places in the map. Aye, agree with me. That's when it stopped becoming fun. Like whenever they introduced skill based matchmaking into games. No, I mean when it came with Call of Duty and every other sort of fucking game nowadays. Like that's bonkers. Like you never used to have that, but that's obviously part of the whole way things is nowadays with everything being fair but that's insane like I could go in a game I don't need to as you said coming on and playing with me and we're just getting sh- shit on mm-hmm. like you're new to the game you can't really see and experience the game unless you go play it by yourself yeah. with people beyond your level but you can't just jump in with me because all of a sudden it's like oh no matchmaking and then you're playing against psychopaths people who haven't like fucking put the game down ever and I, same with me I play against people that are just like Everyone, like, I don't need, don't need to play against Twitch streamers and all this kind of shit every day. I just want to chill and play it. Just because I'm half decent at a game doesn't mean I need to fucking compete every time I fucking turn on. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I used to stream on Twitch a lot. I was streaming the day actually for the first time in about like six or seven months. It was a fucking good time. You heard of a game called The Binding of Isaac? No. Check out The Binding of Isaac. It's it's a it's like a roguelite style game um yeah i was playing a wee bit of that but i used to stream like full time like like way back and i always used to play competitive games um and playing competitive games online is just an is just a a surefire way to keep your self-esteem really really fucking low because there's just no matter how good you get there's always a guy that will just come along and take a big shit right on your face just it just yeah it's impossible yeah, well, that's what I realised anyway as well. Even when you're talking about, um, like, before we were talking about what's your favourite drummer and different things like that. Like, even nowadays, there's so many, like, especially with access to the internet and shit, there's so many different things out there. Like, the best drummer could be the guy who stays fucking around the corner from me. Yep. You know what I mean? Someone in a little unknown band is, like, there's shit of people everywhere. It just comes down to where they're You've got a good personality and good vibes, and you're not a dick. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're not a dick, and you're a good musician, or even like bonus, and you're a nice guy, like when we met fucking Volvadini and that, like, he's a fucking really good. Your music's shit hot, and you're all really fucking nice. They were, uh, how oh, nice were how nice were Volvadini the way? Oh, like beyond it, man. Beyond that. They were just the, they were just the easy they were the they were the easiest dudes to get along with and I asked them a bunch of questions and they had no problem answering them. They were just yeah, yeah just nothing. Mate. Yeah, super super nice bunch of guys. Like really really so good. That, that shit's always fucking refreshing. 
Oh, very, very refreshing. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it now as well is that if you can, if if you can do the social media thing, if you can do the TikTok thing, if you can do the Instagram thing, that's that's a huge part of it now. Is it? It's almost a hundred percent necessary these days, yeah. really. Like, if you well, actually want to get I'll, anywhere. I'll, well, you know that band Left to Suffer. Mm -hmm. I've kind of watched that with them for like when they started, from like using that song with um, CJ. Mm -hmm. as part of the first EP and then having the EP the way it was some good videos good songs everything's done properly like production wise everything just just got a good standard to it mm -hmm. and you've got a feature one big and you've got music videos you've really got a presence and that just kind of catapulted them from the beginning Yep. and then straight on like they're all active as fuck on all the socials, yeah, with and the memes and just all the rest of it, and that band as well, that Carcosa from Canada. I love Carcosa. Like, constantly doing those TikTok things and that little challenges and yep. all the different kind of shit. Which is cool. Same with me if I had the access to it, which I'm working on. If I if I had my drum set up here where I could play them, hundred percent, I'd go and live stream some drums, take some requests, and record covers. I do because I used to like play drums to like as well. That's probably why with my different splashes and bells and that shit that I hit when like playing like rap songs, playing like a dance song. Oh like, right. Like, drum, and just keeping the timing, obviously, but just adding in, just filling in all the gaps. You know what I mean, and switching shit up, and that was always good fun, man. Yeah, I've got there's a, a I've got a buddy. He's the drummer in a band called Throne of Exile. And he's also the drummer in a band called Dragon Corpse as well. You've very likely yeah, heard of Dragon Corpse. I, yeah, I even think I've heard of Throne of Exile as well, to be honest Yeah, Throne of Exile. I did a I did a reaction video to their That's probably that's probably where I made a fucking Yeah, of Throne of Throne of Ex Throne of Exile are fucking brilliant, man. I love those guys. They're so underrated. But he does um he does drum covers of like game soundtracks. So yeah. he'll do like he'll, so he'll drum along to like um to like I don't know the Bob Om Field from Mario sixty four and shit like uh, that and he just puts that up like that's that's where it's at like for sure and yeah. I think and yeah you should I mean here's me sitting here saying oh gee you should just go and fucking do that like it's the easiest thing in the world I understand that it's not because you've got like an actual proper grown up job you know and I just sit around listening well, to metal all day so. <laughs> Well, I mean, shit's gonna get fucking done. I mean, eventually now, and now that I'm back home and stuff, so I'll just eventually get it done. I'll have my wee space, and then the band's always looking out for places. Like we were really close to getting a place in Glasgow, sharing it with Party Cannon and Aphotic. Um, I, I, so I, I love Aphotic. Well, whenever that place becomes available, hopefully we can get in there because that'll be good to share space with those. Those two bands, you know what I mean? All of us sharing a space and having the drums permanently set up and everything, so I can just go in and just and just just play crack. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've I only know Party Cannon from the name. I don't even know what they're about. Are they like Slam or like they a meme band or like what's the what's the deal? Like Party Slam, party but slam. like heavy Slam, brutally Slam stuff, right? Right. Uh, the the genius of that stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna really have good. to. I haven't met them yet, but I have no folk that speak to them and say they're all sound as fuck and they like to chill and stuff as well. Yeah, um, which is always a bonus. Always so, a bonus. Always, always a bonus. They're all, they're all on board for that, and I they're just genius. In terms of like marketing and stuff they do and shit like that. Yep. Like I've seen their videos. They got like push up pits. Like getting like fucking fifty people to do fucking push ups in the pit and stuff like that, and the cunts biting about and fucking dolphins and shit. There's beach balls flying everywhere, and like I haven't read some of the lyrics, but I'm pretty sure it's all kind of just bonkers. You know what I mean, yeah. quite and just it's, it's just uh, everything about it is all genius. It's a clear vision, and it's cool as well. Whenever well, it depends what kind of festival they're on. But obviously, their name, the way it is, and the colours, it pops out like fuck. No, I mean on a full festival lineup, 
full of fucking mad thorn writing in fucking white on a black background. Yeah. Um, theirs is just like both party cannon, fucking blue, green, red, yellow. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, oh, oh you can't miss it, like for yellow. sure. You cannot miss it, but then obviously some festivals will just black it out and make it black, which is funny. But you can see whenever I've seen them on festivals when it's been in color, it's just like yeah, that's the first thing my eye goes to on this whole like hundreds of bands. I'm just like, what's that in there? Oh, yeah. Well, so cool. well, well, that's a, well, that's a that's a funny thing that happens in this line of work where you'll get a band, like a spe- slam bands are really bad for doing this. Where they'll have their logo, but you can't actually see what the fucking band name is at all. It just looks like a bunch of. Sc- I th- I think that's a slight slam elitist thing, where it's like, okay, but yeah, yes, great, we've got the best logo. Aye, yeah. We've got yeah. the best logo because it looks like a pile of fucking kindling, you know. Right? <laughs> Isn't it, man? Oh, wait, look, two seconds, we need to get that. I'll it's get good. back on that. Because that's something that we didn't want to do. <laughs> it's all good, man. Oh shit! I should really be filling the time here. I was just fucking scrolling slam worldwide, trying to look for a fucking track. What is that track called? It was something like super over the top. <sighs> I can't remember what it's fucking called now. Yeah. Yo. Oh, good. So, we were talking about logos. Yeah. Well, just the sort of the way the head of the trait is written. Like, you know what I mean? You can, you can see it. You know what I mean? For people that are obviously not into metal, you'd probably be like, what the fuck's that? But it's, it, that's definitely clear enough, man. Yeah. And I love the logo. There's something about it. And the way it just came about from me and the missus diddling, I was just like, oh, this is cool, man. And then when it got brought to life, I was like, yeah, that's it. That's a logo. Yeah, man. And especially, I, yeah, I love that one. Yeah. No, I like no, I like it as well, dude. I like it as well. Um, how long you been married for? Five years. Five years? Yeah. Been together for 13 Oh fucking hell, man! Congratulations, dude. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. How did you's uh, How did you's meet? It's uh, through one of my old band mates I was in. He was right. going out with her, well, and then yeah, we met up at like a New Year's party, and then got together, got chilling. That was it. And that Best was testing. Fucking hell, mm-hmm. man! Fucking hell! I liked it. I like that. I like that. Fucking hell, sorry. Fucking Happy days. Happy days, man. Sorry, fucking you got an itch. You, you've seen as well about gaming. I yeah, do was, love was... uh, Res- Resident Evil. Old Resident Evil and Silent Hill games as well. Oh, that's right. I remember you. Yeah, that is. Yeah, I think that was one of the first times I'd met you. Yeah, actually, you were talking about you were talking about um, Silent Hill. Aye. Uh, I really love Star Wars. They're brilliant. What is it about them in particular? You ever played them? I've played them a wee bit. Oh, they're just fucked up, mate. It's just disturbing, fucked up shit. It's good. Oh, good. You're a fan of disturbing, fucked up shit? Aye. Uh, yeah, even though too. I don't watch much, much horrors and different things, but I really enjoyed that. Especially when it was just scary as fuck. Awfully good. 
Yeah, I like the um, yeah, I love the use of fog and especially the first Silent Hill game. Like that's just that is that is genius. I I, I saw oh, somewhere as well was that that was that they actually did that more for like because they didn't want to render in too much stuff. Um, so yeah. it was actually it was actually like a tech choice more than anything else, but it ended up just yeah yeah because the game would look like if you took away the fog, the game would look like absolute balls as well. Like it'd just be so empty spaces and that just like nothingness. Yeah, but I get I you know, obviously that happened for a reason. It was a good choice, and the, and even in the first game, like right in the beginning, when you like have to run away from all those wee crazy fucking things and you've got to die. Yeah, like it kills you, and you're sitting there thinking like you fucking failed it and that. I remember even times doing that and then resetting it, being like, oh fuck, start again, watching the whole thing, then realizing actually no fuck. Just let it play out. You've got to die. I was like, that's mad. I like that. That is cool. That is cool. Yeah, I really, yeah, I really, really like that. Actually, yeah, I need to. I think I played a wee bit of Silent Hill One, but I never. I I played a lot more Resident Evil. Played a lot of Resident one, Evil games. One was just like whatever. Silent Hill Two, still to this day, holds weight. That's really fucking good. Mm-hmm. Probably due to play that at some point. Yeah, I think but, I played. Resident Evil one, two, three. Yeah, I think yeah, I think all all of them up until Resident Evil five, I think, and then I played the. I yeah, played, same as you. I, I went think, one to four, start to go arcadey and shit, didn't it? I. It didn't really Resident Evil anymore. I did like. Um, I like. I did like Resident Evil four. It had like a, I did like the arcade vibe of it, um, but I remember. Yeah, yeah. I remember Resident Evil Five being totally shit, and then I think Six. That was Six was a bit of a return to form. I think that was that like the first person one that was all set in like one mansion again. I think. No, I don't know. I didn't play. I didn't play it again until that Biohazard one. Biohazard inside the one. Oh, whatever the camera was called. The one that's inside the fucking house. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. First yeah. thing is the family. And then. And then going back to the remakes and shit. But I still played like Resident Evil Zero on the GameCube. Yeah. That was really good. And Code Veronica X. Um one, two, three, Nem- Nemesis and yeah. I've got really good, good memories of Resident Evil Code Veronica. Uh, my my dad got a pirated version of it for the Dreamcast. Oh yeah, fuck yeah, same had pirate copies of everything back in the day was the business. Yep, I had to, you had to get the boot C D as well. That's fucking mind blowing to me. Like you put the boot C D in, open it up, up, put the put the illegal copy in. I felt like such a fucking badass man. I remember it. I was like, I, Oh my you, god. You did so many games for like a tenor and stuff, catalogues full of games, so Yep, I remember going to fucking all these car boot sales and just yeah, coming back with all these games. But yeah, no. Code Veronica, that was that that game really felt next generation. Just cause it, at uh, the time, just because of the voice acting and the graphics and just everything cut about scenes. it. Yep, the yeah, cutscenes. I was just, I was, I was fucking blown away. Um, yeah, a lot. And that bit where you got to fight the fucking tyrant in the plane. At the end, you're like in the back of the cargo plane, and it's like a teensy little space. You've got to fight yep. the fucking. Tyrant. And then you got to put, go and pull the fucking lever right at the end to fucking eject them out. Obviously, that was, or like the end of every old Resident Evil, it would just kind of be like the fucking gimmick where they get thrown a fucking rocket launcher. Yep. I went, but I went no way off. <laughs> and then he just, and then he just yeah, destroyed. the rocket launcher just comes in from like out of yeah. shot. And you're just like it's just arrive for like five minutes, and then someone's gonna chuck your rocket launcher. I just fucking frag the fuck out of him. No, it, the the thing is about that um, about that um, that actual boss fight is that if you haven't saved up enough ammunition, um, yeah, fuck. you can't get back. You just have to restart the game. Game, yeah. yeah. Or if you haven't saved, like when you're going for like challenges and stuff, you know what I mean. And if you yep. die, then you're back to the beginning. It's horrible, man. Yep, it's just a it, it's a it's a it's part of it. Man. God, games have just come such a massive way, and just like uh, just, just. If you had a Dreamcast, I had one as well. Do you ever play a game Jet Set Radio? I fucking love Jet Set Radio. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you must have done Jet Set Radio. Jet Set Radio. I don't know that game, 
it, it, th- that is still one of the coolest games I've ever seen in my life. Like, Same, just isn't it? everything about it, man. Incredible, yeah. Just, just for for I just I just realized for for people watching that might not have heard of Jet Set Radio, it was like a cell shading. It was like a cell shading graffiti rollerblading game. You did grinds, you could wall ride, and you could like, and you had to like tag separate. Yeah, was like, like Tony Hawk's as well. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, and Jet Set Tony Hawk's fucking yeah, but that's what it is. What do you say? It was soft cell. Um, cell shaded. Cell shaded, yeah, because it was like it was done mad on it, almost like it was sketched. Yeah, and Jet Set Radio was the name of a a pirate radio station. Yeah. Yeah, so it was. I yeah. had like a story in the campaign. Yeah, I mean, it was really fucking good. Jet Set Radio was fucking brilliant, man. Is it? Yeah, super, super underrated. Yeah, it's Sorry. Like, the, Sorry. The, the, the 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 entire console, unfortunately, Sega just never really seemed to be very good at marketing. The Dreamcast really flew under the radar in a lot of ways, but there was so many fucking games. Me. I'm surprised you had that. I had that as well, man. We playing like Virtual Fighter and shit. Virtual Fighter. I, can't remember, I don't think I had too many games for the Saturn, but I never had a Nintendo. But I played them. I never had an N64, but I played it. I. Yeah, gaming was my gaming was my thing when I was younger because I didn't go to school. I was one of those homeschooled freaks. Um, oh, really? Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, and uh, my parents, uh, my my parents' uh, definition of education was a little bit uh, <laughs> a little bit <laughs> lax. So I spent quite a lot of time playing games. So I ended up having every single fucking console that you can think of. Um, yeah, That's no. So- I, yeah, I had an, an N64 fucking eye, golden eye. Oh, of course, yeah. I played golden eye today. You know Go- I mean? like golden I've, eye, Ocarina of Time. Thoughts, yeah, and uh, what was the game that came with it? Um, was it Wave Racer? Some wave kind of race. wave game. Wave Race. Wave Race, yeah. Yeah, and what was that one? What was that Dreamcast? Actually, that's the Dreamcast I'm thinking of. There's also a game of Dreamcast where it's like some kind of thing you're floating about and you go through hoops and rings and sort of things like that. Oh, that was on the Sega Saturn. That's Nights into Dreams. Oh, Sega Saturn. Yeah. That was a weird game as well. Nights. Yeah, that, that was, yeah, that was Sega Saturn. Yeah. Yeah, that was a mad game. I've got that on. Uh, you can buy that on Steam. I've got it on my PC. It's fucking random, isn't it? Well, I, I've, got, I've got Steam. That's what I got. They released Command & Conquer Remastered on Steam. Ooh. You can play the 95 edition Remastered and Red Alert 1 Remastered. And they're amazing. And I like what they've done as well. It's quite funny. See when you when you load the game, the graphics are the same. They're in like DOS mode and I was like, the fuck? It's meant to be fucking remastered. Yeah. And then you, play, and then you play a little bit, you move your guys around and I'm like, this is shit, man. Then after a couple of seconds, it's like a wee thing pops up. Like, do you want to put it into remastered oh, mode? Yeah, <laughs> I was not paying to put it into remastered. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> shit. Thinking, just like thank fuck, because the first I'm just like you, Joel. And then I also played a game called Heroes of Might and Magic. Heroes of Might and Magic. Fuck I. With the little horses, you build stuff inside your wee castle and that, and it's like turn based thing. Yeah, like, do you know that as well? Yeah, yeah oh. dude, dude, uh, d- dude. Honestly, is it? D- d- I, I kind of figure we're, we're both gamers, and like we're, we're we're pretty much the same age, right? I just turned thirty four. Yeah, yeah, so, um, um, yeah, same. Yeah, so I kind of figured, I, I kind of, I kind of figured we would, uh, yeah, we would have, we would have plenty in common. But yeah, no, I've played a, yeah, I've played a, 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 a shit ton of games. Um, mm. Yeah, I do. Yeah, he was a yeah, he was a mighty man. Especially as you say, like when it was back in the day when it was like lots of copied games and cheap. Like yep. nowadays, you pay like what sixty quid, hundred quid odd game passes, DLC microtransactions for fucking games where you could go pick up fucking ten games for a five or whatever the fuck it was. You know yeah, I, mean? I so like, this was just you could go pick up anything and just play it, you don't like it, whatever, give it to someone else or you could just have access to so much more shit. Well, I'm not. 
like I'm not some kind of old like dinosaur guy that's like ah games were better back in the day blah 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 blah. It's like in a lot of and nope. like in a lot of ways they weren't like not being able to save anywhere and like having to like no, it was just yeah, yeah. like sure. there was a lot of things that, that, that there was a lot of things that 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 would have definitely gotten better. But microtransactions are uh, cancer. <laughs> so it'd be so it'd be a little bit blunt, but microtransactions completely they they de- they defeat the purpose of games. Ah, uh, the grinding, the time that I was, anything. Yeah. Oh, have you watched a TV show called Dead Pixels? No, I haven't watched Dead Pixels. Right, hey, get around to that, mate. You will fucking adore that. I absolutely adore that. It's beyond amazing. Dead you Pixels. Can, uh, Dead Pixels, man, it's fucking hilarious. Right, let me just... I don't, let me, let me just I, I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> recommend much shit, but that's... Fucking Dead Pixels. All right, cool. Well, I just searched for it on Google, so now there's no excuse for me to forget. No, I'm um. My stepdad's constantly saying you need to watch Trailer Park Boys. You have. Oh to. yes, you do. See another another oh. person another per- so you like mockumentaries. Yeah. Like the Office guy. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. You, yeah, you'll love it then. Trailer yeah. Park Boys. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. When it, like whenever whenever people like hang out with me and they get to know me and they know I smoke and all that type of stuff and they go, oh, Trailer Park Boys, and I'm like, nah, never seen it. They always look at me. It's like, what are you fucking? Are you out of your mind? Like, how have you not seen Trailer? Hey, Park I was Boys? Just, yeah, I mean, I was the same reaction back in the day when people said cause it's been about for a while, you know what I mean? But when people said to me about it, they were like same kind of reaction, and then they were like, oh, let me put it on, and they done it in like a room with lots of people around and. I didn't really take it in. I was just like, yeah, whatever. You know what um, I mean? I didn't really take it. But then once you actually get to sit and watch it, you're just like, yeah, genius. Yeah. Fucking genius. Yeah. No, I've, I've, I'm, have you seen Better Call Saul? No, I mean, it's because uh, that many folk talked about Breaking Bad and all the rest of it. I've not watched any of them. You haven't, watched Break- you haven't seen Breaking Bad? I don't think I ever will. No. <gasps> All right, guys. Well, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut the podcast there because I can't be <laughs> you can't be affiliated with this guy anymore. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, it's one of those things like I might watch it in like a decade of time if they stop fucking going on about it. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. I'll not I'll I'll not mention. It. So so I guess you're probably the same with The Wire and The Sopranos. I've seen some Sopranos. I'd like to watch all of it, but I haven't watched The Wire. But as far as like, I've watched Vikings up until the last episode. I've still not watched that yet. <laughs> and obviously watched Game of Thrones, but that took a while to get into that. Like years after it came out, like yeah. and then I sat down and, watched, and then I sat there. My missus was like, "Watch the first season." Well, watched some two episodes or something, and I was like, "I watched the whole first season." Mm-hmm. And then I'll kind of up and then after the first season, I'm like, next, 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 next. But <laughs> I get too invested into it. You know what I mean, even all these shows and that couldn't give two fucks. Nothing like I'm truly passionate about where I'd have to like get irate or speak up on trying to defend something and that. It's just like, it's what it fucking is. Yeah, no, I, I, I th- I'm fairly confident you would probably watch the first couple of episodes of Breaking Bad and go, yes, please, more, because it seems to... Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Mm, yeah, for sure. But there really is that much good shit out there, can that way? Mm. But in terms as well, I do like watching a lot of comedy. Like, have you seen What We Do in the Shadows? No, no, I've, I've been recommended it, though. The movie, I'd watch that first. The movie's brilliant. Right. And... The TV series as well is like a mockumentary okay. thing with vampires, and I'm not into vampires, not shit, but it's nah. fucking brilliant, hilarious, so uh, amazing. Yeah, no, I, I, I watch a lot of fun shit. I'm I, I'm one of those absolute losers that gets into a program and then spends a lot of time watching clips of that show on YouTube. And reading comments of people breaking down the shows, I'm just, I'm a, I'm just, I'm just an absolute loser, mate. There's no other way to describe it. Honestly, it's terrible. Um, I will really peek at the comments of 
anything and never look at comments. Only stuff is on our own stuff that we release. Yeah. Like music and that, but apart from that, I don't even go near a comment. Nah, section dude. Section all over. A comment. <laughs> Some 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 comment sections within some things are really really fucking funny. Sopranos comment sections are absolutely hysterical. Um, no, I I don't watch too many TV shows to be honest. Emma watches a lot. Um, Emma watches a lot of different shit, but I'm more into fucked up documentaries on Netflix. I really, uh, really for sure. I love it's me. Cool. It. Yeah, uh, I like documentaries. Or watching like different Vice things on YouTube and that. Ah, Vice. Yeah, yeah, Vice. Yeah, yeah. Vice. Or Vice. I watched this one recently. What's it? I don't. Know if, I don't think it's Lad Bible. No, not Lad Bible. I don't know. It's someone like Informer kind of mm-hmm. thing. Well, yeah. it used to work in certain kind of things like mm-hmm. whatever fucking organ trade or slaves of Dubai one. Yeah, like that's the one you can see how Dubai was actually built. There's a lot of documentaries on that and real real footage of the slaves over there. Uh, uh, anything, you know what I mean? Some decently documentary shit. I'm all about that one. Yeah, Vice is good. Yeah, I do like Vice. Um, yeah, Vice are really good. And um, yeah, no, it's it, me and Emma are kind of... Emma's my wife, by the way, just for anyone that's tuning in for the first time that doesn't know what I'm about. Um um yeah we're always in the market for a fucked up documentary like we saw like surviving r kelly like we watched like all oh, three yeah, parts of that. Sure. yeah and the glenn maxwell stuff and yeah jimmy Stallman stuff yeah i'm all yeah. about all that yeah that r kelly stuff shocked me man see when she went to get her daughter out of the fucking hotel room and like kind of broke her free and stuff and just oh, oh when she went back for the second time and yeah. just like you're not allowed to do it anymore and i'm just like holy oh, yeah the takeaway that I got from surviving R. Kelly was that the whole music thing was kind of a side hustle. That was kind of what he was doing to cover up for the fact that he was like molesting, like molesting kids, basically. Because there was that bit where, like, the the infamous video of him like pissing on that on that like when she was like fifteen, yeah, yeah. and that came out. But then he released, I believe, I can fly or something like that just afterwards. And Kevin, like, everyone forgot about it. It was like, whoa. Like, seeing it broken down like that chronologically, I was like, oh, shit, this guy's... That's, I mean, it's just the fact of, like, when people would speak stuff back in the day or growing up hearing about all this kind of stuff, like, this whole protected kind of bracket of society. Mm. And that's that's just kind of what he falls into. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it goes on everywhere. You've got the right money, you've got the right anything. You do what the fuck you want. Yeah, it's mad. Whatever you want. And then, whatever... The world run by Satanists and pedophiles, David Icke fucking stuff back in the day. Yeah. So even though I don't look too far into it, I mean, I'll like take a peek, take a paw here or something, and then I'll make up, I'll see if it aligns with my own judgment, so my own gut kind of feelings. Yeah. And then watch the different stuff. It's just like, yeah, these are all horrible at it. Jimmy Savile, folk will talk about him. Folk will talk about all that. Yeah, everyone is just bonkers. Have you ever seen the one to do with? Fuck, what's his name? Peter Nygaard. Canadian guy. I don't know. I don't think so. I pin just now to remember that Peter Nygaard. You need to find his documentary. That by far is the most disturbing one I've watched yet. The stuff they tell you and the stuff they show you in that, especially near like the last episode, like where his a lot of his money is going mm-hmm. towards towards a particular kind of fucking research and extraction even basically by the end of it like he's having um, fucking babies with these people and going and killing the babies or getting them aborted and taking um, the stems or taking them over to um, a, a research lab that he's has built in China. Wow! And they're extracting the stem cells out to inject into him, and he would take regular injections, like all the time in that. And Whoa. there's actually they're actually showing you the footage in that, and I'm just like, oh fuck! Again, that's another thing that folk would talk about injecting. I mean, the, whatever the youth blood and all that shit. 
And yeah. then it's actually shown you in the documentary and showing you how much money this motherfucker's invested into a fucking lab that people are running around doing all this shit in. And then obviously you're hearing the, the stories from the, the victims and that. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, that was the worst one I've seen. And yeah, this that's. Is, this is evil. See, I right, may watch that. That one will chill you out. That's a good one. Yeah, that's. It's like four episodes. Yeah, I'll be yeah, I'll be I'll be checking that out for sure. Yeah, and it's it, it's so funny with these types of documentaries as well. Is that people will go, oh man, it's fucked up. Oof, it'll stay with you afterwards. And I'm like, yeah, nice, yeah. excellent. Well, Let's it, hear it. it. I, I, to be honest, that's the last one I've watched. After that, I've not really gone searching for any more. I've like, I've kind of seen enough of them now. I get what goes on. I was like, unless something everyone's raving about is worse than this guy. But even that, I was like, this was a wee, like, I don't know how I came across it. Yeah. But I was just like, some folk I've spoke to have heard of them, but most folk, yeah, again, I mean, I've never heard of them. I was like, just some fucking Canadian fashion owner from Canada guy that you never hear of. And that's what, as well, it's just, he's just one in the fucking millions of cunts that are fucking like that. Dude, I searched up for him and I got a Finnish Canadian fashion executive and I thought that can't be the same guy. Jesus Christ. What the fuck? Whoa. Nigga has ten children with eight women. What the fuck? Oh, nice uh, one, dude. Oh, I'll take them. Ooh, yeah, this looks, yeah, this, this looks right up my street. Yeah. The worst one I saw was um, The Keepers. That was about abuse within the Catholic Church. That was... Um, I did actually. I've, I, I kind of knew enough about that already to watch yeah. that one. I, I, I did see that one on the fucking thing. Yeah. Because have you, have you ever seen a movie called The Magdalena Sisters? No. No. That's like an old movie about that shit. And it's pretty brutal and graphic. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, way like way back, I used to do a podcast, and the guy that I did the podcast with was actually he was a Catholic himself. So we threw down and done some debates a couple of times. So I'm like fairly, fairly, yeah, I'm pretty knowledgeable when it comes to the Catholic Church. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a fan. I'll put it, I'll put it mildly. Um, any establishment, but I don't get. Well, it doesn't I, take. Like as you said, like you, you don't follow anything. You've been homeschooled and that, mm-hmm. but you still got a moral compass of what's right and wrong. It didn't have to be fucking preached to you. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I. I yeah, I can't. I'm. I'm. I'm and not. I'm. I'm not. Take I'm, I'm wrong. Any religion, anything. It's like you know I mean, don't steal, don't lie, don't cheat. You know what I mean, kind of don't be a dick. And then obviously. On every religion, there's some mental shit sprinkled in there as well, which you can take away if you want to. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the moral fucking foundations of everyone is fucking, you know what I mean? Simple things. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no. I, yeah, I know a, I know a decent amount about the, about the Catholic Church, but I think it was actually just hearing, like, stories of abuse. Suspect. From people well, another, that had actually suffered, I was like, I'm I'm reasonably thick skinned, but I was like, holy shit, this is fucking brutal. Right, yeah, it's brutal. Right, especially when you start involving the whole religious aspect of it into it. It's just like, yeah, man. Yeah. One that's... Doc, not documentary podcast even was the Joe Rogan thing with that woman out of Kings and Queens. She talks about her escaping Scientology. Oh mm. right, yeah. I don't think I ever. Actually, I don't watch that much Joe Rogan anymore. But I did. I saw a thumbnail. Of I, that. Don't either, I, mean, I don't either. I don't either. But that's. Um, I, I I did watch that one. That was a decent one. And she explained all that shit. It's like that's like a fairly recent kind of cult. Well, there was actually something. That other documentary I watched, like a three part thing. One was about, about a cult. One was about some kind of porn thing. One was about something else. I can't remember what it was. But one of them was like a kind of, almost like a Far Cry kind of fucking boss oh. who was in like Colombia or some shit, like a Bitcoin guy. And then they all worshipped him. He had like a wee cult and a wee commune and stuff like that. And I'm okay. just like, holy fuck, man. And this is real. This is like, you know, I mean, a couple of years ago, still yeah, exists yeah. to this day. 
all this shit in America, and I'm just like, holy fuck, man. I was like, yeah. yeah. Was there still some mad people out there? Yeah, there's some mad shit. Yeah, there's definitely some mad shit going down, eh? For, um, yeah, for, uh, for sure. Um, shall we wrap it up? Shall we wrap? Shall we wrap it up there, my dude? Can't do it, man. Just end, 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 uh, end on a, end, end on a totally fucked up, totally nothing to do with extreme metal. Yeah, you, don't, you, don't, you don't even want a positive note, a wee question, nothing to end on. <laughs> no, no, actually, um, no, it's, um, no, but, but no, but that, that was. I wish I hadn't said that. We're not going to wrap it up. Um, yeah, I did actually have a fairly, um, fairly rigorous philosophical question for you if you're if you're ready for it. Uh, Right. Would you rather fight a hundred duck-sized? Oh, would you rather yeah. fight a hundred duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Horse-sized duck. Why? That's what I wanted to do as well. But why? Because it's not going to have the skin of a horse. And I could kick fuck out of a duck. So if you just if you just increase it easily, you'd rip it open, break its legs and uh, easy. That that's what I went with. But that's what I went with. But Emma said that like a little duck with the power of a horse running at you. Know what I mean? Hundreds of little ducks. Yeah, I mean yeah, I mean I think I think I would probably be able to take like the first like five or six of the little duck sized horses, but then I think after a while I'd get tired booting them and then they'd swarm me, I think. Exactly, hundred percent. Yeah. It's a fucking swarm scenario situation. Yeah, but the so, but the horse sized like duck what? though, but it would be able to fly. Then I wouldn't have to fight it. Fucked off. I already forfeited the fight, then I won. Fucking so, fly away. So, you, so you, would, you, would win, you would win by a technical decision, alright. Ah, it'd be default. But I can't fight him, he flew away. Turns out horse side ducks is a bit. bit sad. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Who would win in a fight, cavemen or astronauts? Cavemen. Why? Because I'm one. Hmm? Because I'm one. Because you're one. Dude, I don't know if... I, mm, you versus Buzz Aldrin or Lance Armstrong. I don't know, man. I don't know. Easy. If you could ever arrange that, I'll be there. <laughs> I'll fight the cunt on the moon. No issue. That I, I'll fight that cunt on the moon, no issue. All right, that 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 was that was that was not the answer I was expecting. That was a that that was a curveball, sir. I like that. Um. <laughs> so what's going on? Just before we wrap it up, what's going on with the head of the traitor? When's the EP dropping? Have you got plans for anything else? Where can people find you? All that type of shit. Uh, EP's out already, man. EP was out on the 20th of August. And you can get it on uh, YouTube, Spotify, Bandcamp, all that kind of stuff. Okay. There's new merch available as well. You can find it at com or whatever the fuck it is. You can mm -hmm. find that in the links on social medias. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be another new t-shirt, some other kind of stuff. Maybe dropping soon. More merch coming, more music, more of them. Playthroughs, drum playthroughs, other stuff like that. Fucking A, man. Keep the, keep the hype going. More shows coming, different things. Next one, Sire Monasteries, the 5th of October. 5th of October, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be there for that one, by the way. Yeah, that'll be a naughty one. So, yeah. Yeah. All good so far. Fucking A, man. 
Fucking a. Well, um, yeah. Thank you for taking the uh, thank you for taking the time to do this, man. Really appreciate it. It was an absolute. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure. Yeah, mate. definitely. Right. Um, yeah. So that's going to do it for me and this guy over there. Thank you very much for joining me, everybody. Hope you devil horns. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, obviously, links to. Uh, I, I just said beheading the traitor. What the fuck? I knew I was going to fucking do that. Oh my god. The head of the traitor. Full podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Link, links to this 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 sexy motherfucker's band. They will all be down below. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, blah, 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 blah. Whatever they've got. Merch, all that type of shit. Please, 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 once the video's finished, remember to scroll down. Click on every single one of the links. Do all that YouTube shit. Follow them encourage them do what you can um and uh, tell us how much you hate us tell us how shit we are as well yeah well, I, well much welcome i'm already i'm already here to do that for you you know what i mean so <laughs> <laughs> right right pleasure man take it easy and uh love you guys very much and i'll catch you on the next one peace take it easy